Welcome to Monday Blitz. Thank you for joining as we look at 1 Samuel chapter 5. This story is a supernatural story. It's a story of God's divine power, his supernatural power, this involvement that only a divine being could have, a power that is beyond any human capabilities. The story begins with the Ark of the Lord's Covenant being taken by the Philistines. And they take this Ark, this symbol of God's power, the symbol of Israelite strength, the symbol of God Almighty. This symbol is taken and placed as secondary, as servant to the God of the Philistines, Dagon. And as it sits there, as the as chapter 5 says, it sits there and we learn some details that, you know, the Philistines watch as Dagon is humiliated over and over again, and the people become sick. And it made me consider how I may sometimes use my God. You see, the Philistines believed that there was supernatural powers out there. They believed that their gods of the, the heavens were directly impacted by the things that took place here on earth. And also the things on earth were directly impacted by the battles and the struggles between the gods of the, of the heavens. And so for the Philistines, the conquering of Israel and the taking of the ark was symbolic of what was going to be taking place in the heavens above. And that Dagon, this great Philistine god, was actually a greater, more powerful god than the god of the Israelites. And the struggle makes me wonder, do, which, which God do I serve? Do I serve the God that perhaps appears to have lost? The God of the Israelites? Or do I serve more of a Dagon kind of God? A God that needs proof that I'm falling. A God that needs me to do something to help him out. Sometimes I fall in that trap of trying to help God out. As if God needs my human effort to win. Sometimes I live my life like God hasn't already won. Like maybe he's still trying to win. And so as I read this chapter, 1 Samuel 5, I was reminded that God has already won the war. Even at this time when the Philistines appeared to be winning, there was no reason for Israel to be in fear. There was no reason for Israel to question their God. For he was not just the God of Israel, but he was the only true God, the only divine power able to be called God Almighty. And we, looking back at the story, we know the outcome. We know that eventually the ark is returned to Israel. But there was nothing, no divine power in that ark. The ark was not what made God God. The ark was just a symbol of the presence of God, that place of refuge, that place of rescue, of salvation. And we today have that same opportunity of rescue, of refuge, of redemption not in a piece of wood overlaid with gold, not in a church building, but in a relationship with the most amazing Savior of the world. You see, Jesus Christ died and won. He was resurrected and won. He overcame sin and won. And we have the privilege of trusting that, loving in that, and living in the knowledge that Jesus Christ has saved us because He has won. There is no other superpower out there able to conquer Christ. There is nothing above our God. So we can truly be at ease 
knowing that God Almighty has won the war. Until next time.